and welcome to St. Etienne, France, home of one of the most storied franchises in League One who have recently fallen on some tough times. The goal of this save is to get them back to respectability in seven years. Now, I say respectability and not top of League One because we don't have PSG money. I doubt we will ever have PSG money. There would have to be a bunch of things going on behind the scenes for that to happen. And as you can see, the editor is not turned on, so I'm not going to make that happen. And while I think we can challenge PSG, I'm going to be happy with a bunch of top four finishes and some Champions League victories. Not winning the Champions League, but doing well in the Champions League. We want to get St. Ennian back up and back up to the top of French football. And I think it's eminently doable in seven years, as long as I don't screw things up like I did last year in my Crystal Palace save. Smart, good things. That's what we want from me as a head coach, to get St. Ennian back up to the top. That's a very good... It's a very good reminder of what I need to do as a coach to get us there. History-wise, St. Etienne has 10 League One victories. It's the most in League One, more than PSG. Unfortunately, the last one came in 1981, and since then, it's been kind of an up-and-down roller coaster. Now, they got back up into League One in 03 04, and then they were a little bit up and down. Starting in 09 10, they had a very good run. They finished upper mid table most of those years. They got some European football, a couple fourth place finishes, a fifth place finish, which I believe got them European football because of the Coup de League. And then in 18 19, they fell really off. They rebounded slightly, and then last season, they were relegated. And. The fans didn't like that. In fact, the fans didn't like that so much that they stormed the field in protest. And so many of them stormed the field in protest and caused so many issues. The French Football Federation said, hey, starting next season in League Two, you're in the hole, negative three points, which it happens. I mean, it's not administration negative seven or negative 30 or something like that. It's eminently overcome. It's, it's, we can easily overcome this. I believe that. Club vision-wise, they want us to finish in the top four places. They want us to be competitive in the French Cup. First place gets automatic promotion. Second place goes into the playoffs. So that is what we are aiming for this season. I think we can get there. Now, there are some solid clubs here in League 2. Bordeaux just came down. They probably should have been relegated to League 3, but their appeal to the French Football Federation let them stay in League 2. Metz is a solid squad. So Show has a really good youth system, so their youth players can surprise you. Um... Bastia is an interesting squad. I played them in FM18. They were a League One team that was relegated to the fifth division over the course of one summer due to some financial irregularities and other things. They essentially disbanded their first team club, reformed. The reserve squad became their first squad. They started in the fifth division. They've been fighting their way back up. This is their first year back in League Two. I doubt they'll be able to stay. They have a ton of issues. We have our own issues as well, the least of which is our finances. Now, we do have a healthy overall balance. However, our transfer budget is not big. Uh, we sold a bunch of players this offseason. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. And we sold them, I want to say, for like 20 million euros, but we only have 400,000 euros left in the budget. And we are currently up against it with our payroll. Now, this could come back to bite us when we look at the staffing here in a little bit. The good news is we get 100% of transfer revenue up until 60, 55 million euros, rather. Sorry. And then after that, it's 60%. Next year's minimum guarantee budget is going to be 8.47. It's not horrible. It's not good. But it's workable, especially if we can move some players on. And that should be very, very doable. Because one of the things St. Etienne is renowned for in French football is their youth academy. A lot of their success this century is due to the fact that they brought in some very good young players, developed them, got a couple years out of them, and then sold them on for money. Excellent training facilities, great youth facilities, good academy coaching, good youth recruitment. And as we'll take a look at the roster here in a little bit, you'll see that we have some very good potential on the bench. Whether or not I can help them fulfill that potential remains to be seen. It's 70-30 eh, in Pickham. So we play in a 42,000-seat All-Seaters Stadium. Stade Joffrey Guichard it was built in 1931. It was rebuilt in 2014. It's owned by the council. It's a solid stadium. We have a very good group of supporters. If you take into account the hardcore supporters and the core supporters, you're looking at 48%. I can't be upset with that. I can be upset when they storm the field, but I understand why they stormed the field last year. The fact that it cost us three points, it is what it is. We can overcome that, no problem. 
transfer wise as you can see as i mentioned we have let 19 million euros worth of players go 13 of that was in lucas gorna duath who went to uh, rb salzburg and then 5 million was for dennis buwanga who went to los angeles in the mls on the ends ibrahim waji we brought in from Quarbog. Uh, benjamin buchar we brought in from rota don't be surprised this is the Statman skin you can find it on the si forums one of the things i really like this year especially as SI is going a lot more statistically driven with the game. You have a lot of people out there making skins that reflect that. And there are some very good skins out there this year. Um, Statman is one of them. Uh, there's a creator called Jimin, G-I-M-N, who's coming up with a skin that I will probably switch to when it becomes available. It's a light skin, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's really beautiful. It fits my aesthetic and what I'm looking for quite well. But uh, if this confuses you, and I will admit it confuses me, I am still not 100% used to it for the moment. He did include an attribute screen, so as you can see, Waji is an advanced midfielder who can also play striker. He's fast, he's pacey, uh, not the best strength or jumping reach, but then again, five foot nine winger. Mentally, he's he's not bad. The six positioning we need to work on, the concentration, composure, decisions, those are also kind of low, along with the aggression anticipation. Six, seven, eight is what I would consider to be minimum, depending on what we're looking at for first tier football uh, attributes. He could use a little bit of help, but I'm just now seeing that he's 27 years old, so these aren't really going to improve. But for a person we paid a million euros for, he's not bad. He can definitely do a job for us. I wouldn't expect him to be a world beater by any stretch of the imagination, and he's not going to be. But if he can come in, do what he's supposed to do to the best of his ability, I will be happy with that. Benjamin Buchari is a 21-year-old midfielder. Five foot five hundred thirty-six pounds. Okay. That explains the seven uh, heading and the eight jumping reach. Physically, he's not too bad. The strength is a little bit on the low side. Mentally, the aggression would need to come up, as would the positioning, but he's solid everywhere else. Attribute-wise, 12 crossing, 14 dribbling, 12 first touch, 12 passing, 13 technique. He's got... Well, they say he wants to be an advanced playmaker or Mazzala. We don't play that in the formation I'm, I'm, I'm using now, although we could possibly switch to Mazzala support role. I have to take a look at that here as we go forward. We're going to take a look at the roster now. We'll filter these out. If we look at the senior squad and sort by potential, as you can see, there is a lot there. Eamon, Eamon Aiki is a 17-year-old youth player, inverted winger, two-star current ability, five-star potential ability. I need to make sure I move him to the senior squad. Saidu Sao is our best youth prospect, 20 years old, defensive center back, three-star current ability, five-star potential ability. Uh, Amiyan Mufek is a 21-year-old midfielder, three-star current ability, five-star potential ability. Eddie and Green is a very solid young keeper. Now, I think it's some type of cosmic karma that Eddie and Green plays for St. Eddie and whose colors are green. If we go to the attributes here, as you can see, he is a very solid keeper. And he could definitely do a job for us in this and in League One when we get promoted, if we're able to hold on to him. That is going to be the theme going forward. Because as you can see, players like Mufek are already wanted. Charles Abi is already wanted. He is a very good young striker. Uh, Mikhail Nade is already wanted as a 23-year-old defensive center back. Three-star current league, four-star potential league. So, uh, Amis Nari is also wanted. John Phil Crasso is wanted. But he's three-and-a-half star, three-and-a-half star. So, it's kind of six, one-half dozen the other. Uh, Louis Mouton is also wanted. It's it's going to be a theme going forward. We're going to get in some really good youth players develop, and other teams are going to come after them, especially if and when we start doing well in the league. We get promotion this year. We go up. I guarantee you the vast majority of these young players are they're going to start being looked at by other squads. And we're kind of stuck in a situation where I can't offer them contracts that pay them more because I'm up against the payroll. I can only offer them so much. And they may not want to stay. Yeah, we're a League 2 potential League 1 team, but there are other clubs out there with better reputations than that that they will go for for less money. It's really kind of annoying at the end of the day. Now, if we take a look at the second team here, uh, there are some very good people here too. Uh, Giannis Larry, 19-year-old striker. The stamina and strength a little bit on the low side. The two determinations and the absolute killer. That's a complete turnoff for me. I've never quite been able to explain this. Couple with the three bravery. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, I've never really liked low determination players. So the interesting news is that he's also here until the end of the season. So I suspect what we might do is either, you know, I think we're just going to transfer list him. 
and see if anybody comes in for him. They say he's worth 700000 If we get 500 I'll be okay with that. Um, Lewis Dillon, Pommy Jobo, he's a uh, striker with some potential. His positioning's not great. His work rate's not great. His teamwork's not great. You know, but then again, he's young. Um, 16 determination, though, puts him head and tails above uh, Giannis. Well, we're not going to look too in depth at the players here. We can do that when we when we get to a game. Uh, Shake Fall is probably our best youth prospect, 16 year old, advanced mid striker. We'll take a look at him here real quick. You can tell he's 16 years old. 13 decision making is nice. 13 flare is nice. 12 vision is nice for his age. 13 first touch. 13 finishing. 13 technique. His acceleration and natural fitness is nice, so he definitely has potential. He's going to be one of those people who in three years other clubs are going to be coming after, and I'm going to be fighting to keep him here. So the thing that is kind of annoying, at least to me, is what we're looking at is teamwork work rate, natural fitness, and stamina. And for the most part, all of our players are in the blue, which is good. The guy's in the orange. Um, it is what it is. Jabril Othman. Take a look at him real quick because he is short on some of those places. but. He's 18 years old. We can definitely get them into training and bring him up. So I've already got the tactic installed. We'll take a look at that here. It's a tactic I saw on a thread in the SI forum. And I've been experimenting with it in the beta, and I really like it. Now, I normally like two striker formations. I'm a 4-2-4 adherent or like a 4-3-1-2 sort of guy. Or a 3-4-1-2, two, two strikers up top. That's what I go for. But I've been, I've been playing around with this. I really like it. Now, some of the results you can get with it are frustrating, but then again, that's football. Uh, they're calling this a 4-3-3 DM wide, but it's more, it's literally a 2-3-2-2-1. Um, as you can see, we have a positive mentality. It's much shorter passing. We're playing out of defense, low crosses, work the ball in the box. We're playing for set pieces, overlapping on the left and right with a higher tempo. So we're talking a lot of short passes with not a lot of dribbling. Uh, most of the players in their positional role have dribble less, either as part of their instructions for the role they're playing, or I've added it. So we're looking for a lot of short passes back and forth, almost a vertical tiki-taka going up the field. It's a custom mentality because that's what I had to add. So the idea is the inside forwards are already sitting narrower. The wing backs are already sitting a little bit more wide. They're going to overlap. The inside forwards are going to cut in. The pressing forwards are going to be there. The center mids are going to come up and help. Now, the, and then your uh, half back and your two defensive backs are going to stay back. The wing backs I have on automatic. I don't have them on attack because I want them to not get so far forward that we're not going to get caught off the pace. Now, my wing backs are solid, they're not spectacular. So we're playing uh, a, a mid-block with a standard line of defense. I don't expect we'll get beat over the top a lot, but I do know we are going to get beat over the top occasionally. The nice thing is, Briancon and Giradon are both solid defensive center backs. Green is a solid keeper. So, you know, we're going to give up goals, but I don't think we'll be giving up a, a lot of goals. Transition-wise, we're throwing it out long. We're distributing the center backs and the wing backs. We're distributing quickly. We're countering and counter-pressing. Uh, we're doing the mid block and we're stopping the crosses some of the additional stuff that we've got going on opposition instruction wise all the wide players were trigger pressing automatically everybody no matter who they are or where they are we're showing onto their weaker foot except the keeper there's no we don't have the press on or anything like that i don't expect my striker to be in the keeper's face because it's just one less person on defense so one of the things i found is that as a base formation starting out this works really well you can tweak a couple of positions to better fit your players um False nine works really good. Deep line forward can also work really good in this formation. Something like a box-to-box -box midfielder with a ball-winning midfielder also works really well. Uh, I noticed one of my players, uh, one of the players we looked at earlier, uh, like to be a Mazala, maybe a Mazala on support, coming in to fill in this area here. Carolero could be interesting as well. But I've used this in my offline save and the beta. I really like the results. It's one of those where, yeah, at the end of the day, you're going to have games where you have 65% position possession you have seven shots three on target you score one goal and you win and i am perfectly okay with that you know i'm perfectly okay with the draw too as long as as long as we're not losing consistently i am okay with that so this is a fun formation to watch it's a fun formation to see both in 2d and 3d uh, i think we'll just watch it in the 3d when we get to the games
So the other area we are lacking at the moment is the coaching staff and the recruitment team. Uh, I need a general manager. I need some scouts. Um, need a couple more coaches, although I did go out and I looked for a couple more coaches. One of the things I am really getting into this year, if we look at the coaching team, I've added their style, their playing style, their playing mentality, their pressing style, their marking style. So we have a formation that emphasizes short, quick, accurate passing. We have overlapping wing backs. We are aggressive, but not overly so. So that means if you're a coach who likes to park the bus and you play mentality is very cautious and you don't press as often, your future isn't long at the club. Now, honestly speaking, I have yet to talk to anybody or find out for myself who knows what sort of impact this has on the squad as a whole and the game as a whole. Someone somewhere, I suspect it's going to have to be one of the bigger outfits like FM Base or one of the tactical discords, is going to have to set up a league where you have a bunch of average players and then you go in and you tweak the coaches and you give one team nothing but defensive-minded coaches and you give another team attack-minded coaches. They play the same formations with the same schedule and you look at the results. Is that a good baseline comparison? I don't know. But having talked to other content creators and other creators and other football managers, the general opinion is this matters. How much it matters is open to interpretation. But at this point, I want to do everything I can to help my squad. And that means because we're playing a high, high, how did I phrase that? A high tempo, there we go, a high tempo passing aggressive formation. I want coaches who are in that mold. Now, for the moment, the guy I pointed out is my head of youth development, Laurent Hoar. Um, and I'm okay with that because he's not going to be coaching all that much, I hope, knock on wood. So one of the things um, I'm going to do here is it's early in the off season. We have yet to play any of our friendlies. Uh, I need to go through set up the responsibilities and stuff like that, hire the staff in, so on and so forth. We'll come back for the Dijon game and uh, see how the formation works, get a leg up on that, and then we will go from there. So it's going to be a little bit of time for me, but not that long for you. And we'll be back in a bit. So one of the ways we are going to find the coaches and scouts to help us fit our team vision and style is with the use of a filter. Now this one is fairly large, it's 14 categories, but it works really well. Um, so one of the things that, that started happening, at least to me last year, and I don't know how long this has been going on, is that you go out, you hire a scout, or you're looking at a scout and you say, okay, I want him to be a scout. He comes in you after you offer him a contract. He says, no, I want to be your chief scout. Or you go to hire a technical director and he says, no, I want to be your general manager. And you say, no, I want you to be my technical director. And he says, no, and walks away. So I find nine times out of 10, putting the staff role is, you know, whatever job you're looking for and the preferred job is whatever job you're looking for, weeds a lot of those people out. Not all of them, but the vast majority of them. Switch this to scout here real quick. And then drop those down to 12. Now we'll drop them down to 10s. Let's see what pops up. For the moment, I have three scouts who are all very knowledgeable about France. I need to switch this to my scouting view. And we're looking for youth players to bring in and develop. So what we're looking for are scouts who have a very good potential. Because current ability, we're not worried about a, a player's current ability. We're worried about what he's going to be down the road. The other thing I like to look at is younger scouts. Because scouts, like players, improve over the course of a save. So if you have a 65 I mean, well, let me rephrase that. We have a we have a good example right here. Eric Larson is 14-16. Christophe Jeannette is 15-16, but he's 35 years old. By the time Christophe Jeannette is 58, there's a good possibility he could be 17-17, 18-18. It's also a good possibility he could tap out at 15-16. But I like a younger scout. We'll take a look at Christophe Jeannette here. France. Um... 
I should be able to name those. The geographer me is dying a little bit inside. Though he knows Spain as well, too. So we're going to see if we can't sign him. Scout, full-time, three years, 1.4, done. And he is going to be my primary Spanish scout. Now, the other thing we are going to look for is... Ooh, Andre Kodov in Ukraine. Where is he? Ukraine in Brazil. Okay, we're going to sign him. He wants 3000 a week. We can get you down to 2.7. Then we're looking for a scout who is... Mamadou Fay is Senegal. One of the other guys I looked at, well, the, my Spanish guy had Senegal. He's got France, too. So, what we made, oh, well, we already went down to 10. A professional Belgian. 50 years old. I wouldn't mind a, I wouldn't mind a coach who knew a lot about Scandinavia and Africa. Suspect what we may have to do. Javier Sanz is 1315. What does he know? He knows Spain. He's not bad. We Bakari. He knows West Africa. This is who we're going to most decide. Scout. Finalized deal. Recruitment team. I have room for three scouts. I hired three scouts. I need a general manager. Or do I? Yeah, I probably do. So I'm going to handle all this offline, but I just wanted to walk you through um, how I'm finding scouts and coaches this year. So we'll be back in just a bit. Well, the preseason went really well. The tactic worked really well. What I do is I go to the team tactic and I clear everything. I have my assistant coach coach the friendlies, and then he's responsible for choosing the starting 11 and the guys on the bench, and he does a really good job of rotating more often than not. It happens at any level of football. Now, sometimes if you schedule a lot of friendlies, you'll run into problems. But, you know, I don't know how many times I've been playing a friendly and realized, oh, it's the 75th minute, and I still got my original starting 11 on the field, you know, sort of thing. Or you play the same guys so much that the guys you want to develop don't get developed. But against Claremont Foot, we had 21 shots, 10 on target, a possession rate of 74%, some really good goals, one by Crosso, one by Shambost. Against Lorient, we beat them 3-1. Again, 22 shots, 10 on target this time, a 64% possession rating. Goals by Sal, Saban, and Waji. Against Nancy, they did a really good job of holding us. We had 20 shots, 6 on target, and a 67% possession advantage, but their defense was really, really strong. And against Oliver and Ace, who are a Portuguese second league team, we absolutely dominated them. 14 shots, 5 on target, 60% possession. Ah, words. 60% possession, and you know, they had 3 shots, none on target. So it was a really good setup for the upcoming season. We're going to play Dijon today. We are still in the middle of the transfer window. We did have a couple of outs. Um, Giannis Larry, he of the two determination, went to Reims for 350,000 euros. And then I was looking through the squad. Jean Philippe Crosso was going to be my third striker at best. And then I saw that he had a three determination and he just on paper, at least he looks to be solid. But if you look at his career stats, four goals in 15, one goal in 16, four goals in 15, one goal in 24, five goals in 23. And then that's against some not, so, that's against some not so good opposition. It seems he kind of always plays down to whatever level he's at, you know, and the team thought so well of him last year that they sent him out to a jockey on loan. He had four and 15. So um, I put him out there. Charleroi picked him up for 1.1 million. What that did was allowed us to get our budget under control. Most of that, most of those sales went back into the payroll. We're currently over our payroll a little bit, but I have some loan players coming in. Um, waiting to see if they do come in. If they don't, I've got to go look on the market again or possibly some more loan players, which means possibly paying some of their salary, which goes towards our payroll cap. So for the time being, we're not that far over it, so I'm not too worried about that $1 million sitting there in the transfer window. We did have one in. 
and that is Victor Alvarez. Now, it says he's not a fan of big games. I'm okay with that because he's going to be part of the rotation more often than not. He is a player who can play the defensive left side of the field, and he's pretty solid. For 5'10", 152-pound defensive left back, 29 years old, I really don't have anything to complain about here. Now, his determination is a little bit on the low side, but a 6 is a heck of a lot better than a 3 or a 2, at least in my opinion. And, you know, the 9 aggression I wish was a little bit higher, but, you know, he's a solid, solid left back force. 3.5 star current ability, 3.5 star potential ability. He has some veteran leadership there, at least on the squad, and he's providing that. Today, we are playing Lorient? No, we're playing Dijon. Did I say Lorient? We're playing Dijon. And all cards on the table. This is not the first time I've played the game. OBS updated, and somehow it reset all my video settings. And I thought I'd gone in and fixed them, and it turned out that I hadn't. I was actually recording the game in myself at, like, 2,500 KBS, which is just absolutely insane. I mean, I have a really good system. It's a couple years old, but it's still a really good system. And so... I've spent the last half hour going through my settings and video settings and everything like that. And what I've been doing is starting the game, seeing how the graphics go, doing some mock commentary, and then I have an instant, I have instant results because I've been doing some other experiments and stuff like that on the skin. And there's an in-game instant result button. So once something's happened or I think I have it figured out, I just instant result to the end of the game and loaded the save, which took, which I did right before this started. So... Eddie and Green's wanted. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that, especially because it's Earth of Berlin. They come after him. He's going to want to go. And our backup keeper is nice, but he's also 11 years older. And hoping to keep Eddie and Green here for a while. He, he's going to be key to getting us up into League One and key to us staying in League One. So this is the team we have starting today. It's going to be Green and Gold. Not even Briancon, as I'm totally mispronouncing his last name. What's his first name for crying out loud? Anthony. That I can work with. Nadia and Anthony as the defensive back. Alvarez and Plankia as the wing backs. Jordan as the halfback. Lovre and Mufek as the uh, midfielders. Kafar and Waji as the attacking mids. Abi up top as the striker. And I let my assistant coach pick the squad here. So I have to move some things around. We need it. That's what we need to do. Bring Mutan on, bring Petro on the bench. So hopefully the video issues have been resolved, but to be honest with you, I've been futzing around with it the past half hour. I really want to record this game and get it out of the way. So if it does jump around, if I jump around, I apologize. I'll spend some more time tonight looking at it, but it's been one of those cases where I sat down, I really want to play, so let's get it kicked off. Not a lot of action these first few minutes. Half hour in. Green taps it over to Nade. Gerardin, who's already picked up yellow. Lobre. Lobre back, back to Briancon. Anthony. Lobre. Nade. Nade out to Alvarez. Back to Nade. Gerardin. Lobre. Nade. He brings it up. Turns it back to Gerardin. He holds it up, sends it back to Briancon. Mufleck. Briancon. Mufleck. Mankind over to Girardin. Lobre. Long pass towards Waji. He's going to get by the defender. Not quite sure what happened there. Waji loses the ball. He tried doing too much on his own. Dobre chests the ball down. We have the numbers, but we're all out of position. I don't know what the defenders were doing there. What on earth was that? We're going to highlight Mankind back to Girardin. Puts the ball up, loses it. Sale, breaking left. He loses it. Waje just lumps it forward. Reynolds going to pick it up for Dijon. Willems. Lost it towards Benzia. He chests it down, and he hits the post. Alvarez just bombs that out of bounds. Something going on with the defenders. I'm not quite sure. That ball's headed to the right. I'm up on half time. Three shots went on target for us. Seven and three for them. 
Rinnett picks up the header. Lost it down the field. Now he just has it right to Dobre. Solly got between the two defenders. Hits the post and goes into the goal. Jeez. And the home crowd goes wild. And they should be because with nine shots, five on target, they have a 2 0 lead. Barra sends it in. Not as there. Jordan. Waji with the goal. Is he offsides? No, he's not. One back. We're 62 minutes in. We're going to make a couple of subs here. Let's see. Anthony's going to come off for Sal. We're going to bring Petro on for Makanade. We're going to bring Mouton on for Girard on and move, move like back to half back. All the guys with the yellows off. Last thing I want to do is go a man down. Solid. Look, the defender ran away from him. Rancon just possessed him. Just a little Girard on. Not a. Up to Lobre. Lobre. Over to Plencia. 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 Up to Waji. Got help. He gives away. Pretty volley. Oh, it hits normally in the back of the head. Lobre. Blocks it. Goes to Waji. He heads it into the box. Congo's going to give it back up to Waji. He bounces it off Kanye, goes high in the air, and Kafaro can't stop it from going out of balance. We have our chances, we're just not making the most of it. I'm going to go to attacking here. Get the center mids and the wing backs pushed forward a little more. Valencia on the throw in, in the box. Sal, Mufleck, Alvarez, top of box, and he absolutely buries it. Bottom right corner. And we are all square. Fifteen minutes left. Do we go back down? Now two minutes. You know, we'll go back down to positive. Dobre, corner kick. Going time. Sends it in. Congress there. Oh, nice save by the guy in the far post. And they're going to say it's a foul. No, they're not. Thankfully, guy fell over. Dobre, corner kick in again. Not quite familiar with this formation they're using. But okay. A draw is good. A draw is nice. I will take a draw. And that is what we end up with. With two goals in the second half. One in the 54th minute from Waji. One in the 74th minute from Alvarez. We come back and claw the draw. Both shots, four on target, 61% possession. What do we got here? Our XG was 1.79. Two clear cut chances, two corners, 23 fouls. Yeah, that's the most fouls we've had. Five yellow cards. Regular season's different than the preseason. So, I was looking at the game. I wasn't looking at the recording. Hopefully, there weren't a ton of issues there. I, sus I'm, I suspect there weren't. Set it up for x264 and a couple of other things so the quality should be pretty good we are going to go in here we'll do the press conference they did not take my suggestion to randomize the press conference that would have screwed up i swear about 99 percent of every football manager manager out there but they just randomized the questions on where they showed up so we're going to save the game here And, as I mentioned before, we're going to skip the entire month of the games coming up. That's five. Um, the transfer window is going to close when we play POW, and then we play Bordeaux after that. I am anticipating a few more moves. Um, one of the things I am looking to do is I got some very capable youngsters in the 17 to 18-year-old range, Jabril Sharui. I wouldn't mind getting out for first-team playing time. Jabril Othman, who I think also has a low determination. No, he doesn't. He's got the 18. We get him out for on loan. Um, if we look at the affiliates, most of these are just scouting arrangements. I can't. Claremont 
in League One we have an arrangement with, but there's the mutually beneficial. It doesn't tell me what it is. Um, the Spores from Senegal, which is nice. We get some scouting help from them. Um, well, Valets, Matt, we got a lot of... Like, Lapui Foot is in the National. What I should be able to do is, as an example, I want Jabril Othman to go get some playing time. I should be able to assign him to an affiliate, but none of my affiliates are actual affiliates. So I have to put him on the development list, which I will do here after the end of the episode. I also have to set up the training for the first team squad. First and second team squad, I should say. So that is what I will do here shortly. So this was a good episode. Intro to the team, intro to the tactics, how we do some coaching. We'll look at scouting next episode and how I set that up. Then uh, we'll keep the season underway. I do really like our chances of going up. I think we have a really good possibility of finishing top two. We have the squad for it. We have the youngsters for the future. And I need to learn that bringing in a 27-year-old four-star guy is really, really good because he's already as good as the 18-year-old two-star, five-star potential guy you hope he's going to be five years from now. So we'll get there. Uh, getting St. Ennian back to glory is going to be an interesting task, especially in League One but I think we can get it done. That said, if you did like what you've seen and heard, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticisms, comments, leave those down below. I will answer those as fast as I can. My name is FM Jellico. I thank you for watching.